Today, we're talking about permutation prompts and a few productivity shortcuts that will make your mid-journey prompting workflow more efficient. We'll start with permutation prompts, also called batch prompts. This is a specific format that lets you submit multiple prompts at once by using curly brackets and comma-separated text. You can do this both on the website and on Discord. The simplest way to use permutations is with prompt text. Let's say that you want to create images of different animals wearing tuxedos. Instead of running three separate prompts, you can use curly brackets with comma-separated items like this. When you submit this prompt, Midjourney will run three separate jobs. Each word or phrase separated by commas within those curly brackets becomes part of a new prompt. So this is incredibly useful for when you want to test different subjects, styles, or parameters and not have to type everything out multiple times. I'll show you more complex examples here in a second, but there are some limitations to be aware of with permutation prompts. First, they can only be used with fast or turbo mode, so be sure to select the right speed mode in your settings. Second, the number of prompts that you can submit at once is limited based on your subscription plan. I think for the pro and mega tiers, the limit is 40 and then maybe 10 for the basic and standard plans. Now that we've covered the basics, let's go through some increasingly more complex ways to use permutations. First is permutations with parameters. This is useful for when you want to test how changing the value of a specific parameter affects your results. For example, I want to test different values of the stylized parameter. So I placed three different comma separated values within the curly brackets after the stylized parameter in my prompt. This creates three jobs with stylized values of 15, 100, and 500. For a more apples to apples comparison across stylized values, you can add in a seed number to your prompt. Essentially, this tells Midjourney to start with the same random noise pattern for each job, letting us focus more on seeing exactly what changing the stylized parameter does to the results. If you're not familiar with the seed parameter, I have a dedicated video about it, which I'll link below. You can also use permutations to create images with and without a specific parameter. For instance, if you want to run a prompt with and without your personalization profile, you could run this prompt. Notice that before the comma, there is nothing, which means the first job will run without personalization and the second job will include your global personalization profile. And you can test multiple parameter changes at once, but you want to be careful with this because things multiply quickly. In this prompt, I have three different stylized values and I want to see results for each of those with and without my global personalization. So this permutation prompt is going to run six jobs, but maybe I also want to add in the EXP parameter with values 10, 25, and 50. All of the sudden, I'm submitting 18 jobs with this single prompt. So just be aware of how many combinations you'll be creating. Running a lot of big permutation prompts is a great way to chew through your fast GPU hours. Now, permutations aren't just limited to prompt text or parameters. You can use them for both at the same time. I really like doing this when I'm testing out different subjects and style references. You can place all of the subjects that you want to test in one set of curly brackets and a set of SREF codes in curly brackets after the SREF parameter. This permutation prompt will run nine jobs total, where each of the three subjects is ran with each of the three different SREF codes. In the prompt text example so far, I've been using simple phrases. So you might be wondering about how you can use permutations when your prompts include punctuation. Simple sentences like this are fine, so if you have a multi-sentence permutation prompt, just comma separate them in curly brackets and they'll submit just fine. But if you're using commas in your prompts, there is one extra step that you need to do because Midjourney is looking for commas to know where to split things up into separate prompts. Here are three prompts that I want to combine into a single permutation prompt. Right now, if I string all of these together and add in a comma to separate them, Midjourney is going to see all of the commas and run a lot more than three prompts. So to get this to work right, we need to add a backslash before any comma that we want to keep. When Midjourney sees a backslash, it knows to skip over it and not treat that comma as a separator. So anytime that you need commas to stay, use this escape character like I've done here so that the permutation prompt runs the way that you want it to. Okay, last permutations example, and then we'll cover a few more productivity tips. How about trying some nested permutations? This is where you place the curly brackets inside of other curly brackets to create even more complex combinations. 
Say I want to run prompts of different characters in different scenes. Here's my nested permutation prompt and I've color coded the text and brackets to make it a little easier to follow. So this permutation creates four prompts. Everything outside of the outermost curly brackets gets included with every prompt. Within the first set of curly brackets, we have a wizard and a knight separated by a comma. So that's going to be the first split. And then nested within each character are specific poses for that character. Nested permutations can get complicated pretty quickly. So I recommend starting simple like this and then building up from there. Just make sure that you're closing all of your brackets properly or Midjourney won't know where one permutation ends and another begins. All right, next I've got a few more productivity tips for you. First up is the repeat parameter. Use this as a shortcut to run the same prompt multiple times. Add dash dash repeat or dash dash R followed by the number of jobs that you want Midjourney to run with that prompt. It's great for when you wanna see multiple variations of the same idea to choose from. And just like with permutation prompts, the repeat parameter only works with fast or turbo mode and not in relax mode. Next, a couple of keyboard shortcuts. After you submit a prompt, you can press the up arrow on your keyboard to bring that last prompt back into the prompt bar. This works both on the website and on Discord. On the website, you can even press the up arrow multiple times to go back through your previously submitted prompts. So it's super helpful if you wanna make small adjustments to a prompt you just ran. One more that's especially helpful if you're in relax mode and can't use permutations or the repeat parameter. When you're ready to submit a prompt, hold down the control key when you press enter. This will submit your prompt and keep the prompt text in the prompt bar. So you can immediately press control enter again if you want to submit another job with the same prompt. These shortcuts and permutations are a regular part of my mid-journey workflow. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining my Patreon community where you'll find all of my monthly prompt collections, exclusive videos, and other mid-journey guides. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.